In this video, we will explore the physical structure of a silicon photovoltaic solar cell. To understand how these solar electric cells work, we first need to know more about the nature of light. Sunlight can act like waves, and it can also behave like particles of energy. These particles are called photons. Remember, everything in the world is made of incredibly tiny particles called atoms. Atoms are so small you can't even see them with a standard microscope, and atoms themselves are made of even smaller particles some of which are called electrons. Electrons are particles of electricity that have a negative electrical charge and orbit around the center of the atom, which is called the nucleus. The nucleus has a positive charge, so we have negatively charged electrons orbiting a positively charged center. The negative and positive charges in this atom balance each other out and the atom has no electrical charge. However, sunlight can actually knock electrons out of their orbit around the center of the atom. To understand how this works, we must remember that light itself can behave like particles. When these particles of light, or photons, hit electrons, they give the electrons some of their energy. If they give the electron enough energy, it leaves its orbit around the nucleus of the atom. Now, we have two free charged particles, the negatively charged electron and the positively charged nucleus. Because positive and negative electric charges are attracted to each other, they'll try to recombine to make a neutral atom. Let's see how this works inside a solar cell. We can't actually see the submicroscopic details of atoms, so we have different visual representations to help us understand them. Imagine that this is the cross-section of a silicon solar cell. The circles represent atoms. When electrons in solar cells are knocked free by photons, the design of the cell forces the electrons to flow through wires connecting the front and back of the cell. This flow of electrons is what we call electricity. Now that we have this basic understanding, we can explore the actual physical structure of the solar cell. Crystalline solar cells are made of two layers of silicon. The top layer is called the N layer, the bottom layer is called the P layer, and they are separated by a border called the PN junction. Each layer contains a small amount of another element using a process called doping. This additional element changes the electrical characteristics of the silicon crystal. Here is a picture of the basic silicon crystal before the addition of any doping elements. The crystal is composed of individual silicon atoms. The silicon atom has four valence electrons in its outer shell. The negative charge of these electrons is balanced by the positively charged nucleus. The top layer of the solar cell, the N layer, is doped with a small amount of the element phosphorus. Phosphorus has five electrons in its outer shell, one more than silicon. When added to the silicon crystal, each phosphorus atom has an extra electron that is free to move about, giving the layer a tendency to give up electrons. The bottom layer, the P layer, is doped with a small amount of the element boron. Boron has three electrons in its outer shell, one less than silicon. When added to the silicon crystal, electron quote-unquote holes result, giving the layer a tendency to attract electrons. If separate, these layers would have no electric charge, but each would exhibit electrical tendencies as shown here. The top N layer has a tendency to give up electrons. The bottom P layer has a tendency to attract electrons. If the layers are in contact, the free electrons in the N layer move to the holes in the P layer through a process called diffusion. This makes a barrier that blocks electrons from moving between layers and establishes a positive and negative charge across the PN junction. Now we can see what happens when sunlight hits the solar cell. Photons of sunlight free electrons in the bottom layer. The negative charge of the P layer propels these electrons upward through the N layer. They flow through any load connected to the photovoltaic cell and finally return to the P layer. This concludes our electrical short on the structure of silicon photovoltaic solar cells brought to you by Solar Schoolhouse. If you'd like to learn more, please visit our website at www.solarschoolhouse.org.